In this quick video, we're going to cover three key topics. First, we're going to cover how to clean your sensor nodes. Second, we're going to talk about how, what the light means on the sensor node itself and what to look for on, on the blinking light when you turn it on. And third, we're going to cover how to make any sensor node a repeater. First, let's talk about how to clean your sensor nodes. So a sensor node belongs to a sensor hub. In order to, make, to claim the sensor node, you need to assign it to the hub. We do this all through the web app. For this to work properly, the first thing we'll want to do is make sure our, our hub is connected. If this is that breathing green color on the, uh, on the on off push button. That means it's connected to the internet and able to communicate to the SASPI system. To do this, if you need, you can go to settings and under mode, just change it to always on, click save. And if you turn the sensor hub on and back off, or off and back on, I mean, it should then connect and be in that mode. Now, to claim their nodes, what we want to do is claim sensor nodes with the button there. What we'll do is just like the hub, each node has a QR code on it. So what we'll do is scan that QR code. If you have just one, I could click Save Now. But since I have uh, multiple here, I, I can just keep on scanning the additional ones. As you'll notice, as I scan, they each get added to that list. Now that I'm done scanning, I can click Save. And as, I, as soon as I click Save, it sends a configuration down to the hub. Now the hub knows to expect to uh, listen to these, to these nodes. At this point, now we can um, turn on the node and the, the hub will respond. So we can click the On button. The light will blink once, and they'll blink uh, two additional times. That first blink is it making a join request to the hub, saying, you, and then receiving this configuration. The, the next double blink is when it takes sensor readings, sends the readings to the hub, and, the, and receives a response. That's how you know it's communicating properly. When you turn on nodes, you typically want to just turn on one at a time, so they're not trying to talk on top of each other. I'll do that one more time for this third hub. Now I know all three of these are, are configured correctly to talk to this hub. When we do that too, you'll also notice the light on the hub. It's right there, that light on the hub will also blink every time it's, it's processing a message from a node. So there's two scenarios that might happen with uh, different sequences of the light. The first is if it's in, in range of the hub, but you didn't properly claim it to the, to the hub. The hub hears the message, but doesn't respond to it um, because it's, just, it's not associated with this specific, specific hub. In that scenario, what's going to happen is then that join message is going to blink once, but now it's not going to receive a response and it's going to blink that those four times saying, hey, I, you know, I never received a join request or an acknowledgement. So that's that first scenario, and it's, it'll keep trying to make more join requests um, every minute or so until it hears a good, a good message back. To correct this issue, all we need to do is just like the, the same steps we walked through previously, is properly claim that to the, to the hub, and it should then connect properly. Let me do that quick here. So I'm going to claim the sensor node. I'm going to scan the QR code. I'm going to click Save. As soon as I see the save devices have been uh, device settings saved properly, I can then turn that on. And now it's it's part of the network. So that's that first um, scenario where you may have a slightly different blink sequence. The second is let's say this is out of range of that hub, and we didn't configure anything to be a repeater yet. In that scenario. It's hard to simulate here. Um, it's a little cold here in Wisconsin to do this test outside. So just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to turn the sensor hub off. And in this case, once I turn this on, what's going to happen is when it sends that join request, there's no device anywhere around. So it's going to stay that solid green. And then it's going to blink, blink four times. So I'll show you that one more time push it on if you see a solid green that doesn't go away it's likely outside of range 
All right, when your setting sensor nodes up, the best thing to do, especially if you know you need a repeater, is to take one, two, um, or at least maybe two nodes and configure them to be a repeater right away. Um, and to do that, you can simply pull the cover off. So there's four screws here. So let me pull the cover off. There's a standard Phillips screwdriver to do that. You can either do it by hand like I am here, or even use an electric drill if you need it. So as soon as we pull the cover off, be careful. There's, there's there is this um, these two wires here that go to the solar panel on the cover. Now what you're looking for is these switches in the bottom right. Switch number one. What we want to do is flip switch number one to the on position. When it's in the on position or up. Um, towards the battery is the on position. It then will act as a repeater. In order for it to be a repeater, though, we got to make sure we turn it off, turn it on, and as soon as it turns on, part of that configuration is what what's the status of the switch, and now it knows it's a repeater. We'll do that one more time. Turn it off, turn it on, and just like we reviewed earlier, it'll make the join request. And from this point forward, with that switch. Um, the, the first switch being in the on position, it will now act as a repeater for other nodes. What this means, it essentially wakes up early um, during the reporting window. It'll wake up early listening for messages it needs to repeat. And so this node can talk to this node that can then talk to the hub. So what I like to do is start with a hub, or I'm sorry, start with a node configured to be a repeater and keep, you know, now we'll start walking away from your, your hub and find a strategic location in your trigger bush. Maybe it's higher up a hill, maybe it's right, you know, where it's still in range of the hub, but it's, you know, in a strategic location where it can cover a lot of ground to service most of the other nodes. Um, as of today, we can um, have two nodes in a system, basically make, make a total of two hops to get back to the hub. So if this node is configured as a repeater as well, a node that's, you know, quite a bit farther away, this node can talk to this node, can talk to this node, can talk to this hub. So it really extends your range of the SASPI system, as long as they're configured to be repeaters. As of today, we recommend up to two repeaters in any SASPI system. That status of uh, being a repeater or not is also available in the web app, so you know what devices are repeaters.